John Guthrie is an artist and owner of Little Cherokee Horses, a mini horse ranch offering equine therapy. Despite suffering from dystonia, a neurological condition similar to Parkinson's disease, John remains an active artist and continues to give back to his community. My name's John Guthrie. I'm a Cherokee artist. We are in Tahlequah, Oklahoma. My wife, Connie, and I have lived in Tahlequah since 1986. Connie and I both grew up in Ponca City. I got out of the Air Force in 1969. I met Connie on uh, July the 5th. We got married on August the 29th, and we've been married for 53 years. I know two things in my life. I know horses and art, uh, not much else. I actually have degrees from the 60s, but when I was in college, pop art and Andy Warhol was what was popular, and cowboys and horses and native people, and not so much. It was easier for me to do what I knew how to do, which was train horses. And so I did that for several years. The earliest memories I have in life have horses in them. I have always been around horses my entire life. I grew up riding brush track horse races. And unlike the horse races that you watch on TV, there aren't quite as many rules when you go riding the bushes. I have a neurological condition called dystonia that was caused by a traumatic brain injury in 1968. It affects my speech, uh, my walk. My hands will open up for no reason. I, they'll clamp down for no reason. When it first came, I had lost my ability to speak. I couldn't walk. I couldn't do anything with my hands. Uh, I had uh, probably between 20 to 35 seizures a day. I've kind of fought this off and on all my life. And then we went with our daughter to uh, Fort Sam Houston in Texas. We wound up at a, you know, the horse ranch that raised miniature horses. And I came from racehorses, so I, I never had really been exposed to the little guys. But I just fell in love with them. And Connie bought a horse, and Celia and that, my daughter and I bought two more. <laughs> now we have 16. The horses have brought me to where I am now. And without them, I don't think I would have gotten here. It is unbelievable the effect that the little guys have on people. And not like big horses. I've ridden some really, really good horses in my life. But the little guys are so much different than the big guys. It's hard to even describe how I really feel about them, I guess. They were like all the horses of my past. They were just in a compact package. What we have is uh, Little Cherokee Miniature Therapy Horses. We are a true nonprofit. We take our money and we put it into the horses. We go where we are invited at no cost to anyone except us. We do this as our part of the community. This is our family personal outreach. We've had them to vacation Bible schools. We've taken them to little kids' birthday parties. We've taken them to most of the area nursing homes and assisted living centers. When you go and you take one of these little guys and you go to a nursing home and you come upon someone who is an Alzheimer's patient, 
and suddenly there's a twinkle that wasn't there until you arrived. And that's special. That moment of remembrance or joy or whatever it is that that person has experienced is that makes all of what we do worthwhile. Come on, show off for it, come on. There it is, there it is, there it is. For the most part, all horses, they're like a companion animal. We've had a, such a long, long history of domestication with, with horses. They're definitely a part of human culture as far back as it goes. The Arabs said that the horse is the God's gift to man. And there's probably not a truth to that. I started in art in the 80s when I had been training some horses down at Salisaw. My idea of art is that it should evoke a feeling. Any artist worth their salt can take a photograph and reproduce it. But to take and to tell a story with your art and to cause someone to feel something emotionally, whether, whether it's happy or sad or good or bad or whatever, but it needs to have some kind of a feeling to it. That's what I try to do with my art. Um, this picture behind me is called Tears for Mother. The uh, Cherokee lived above the sky vault, and so that's where the stars came from. And when they descended down and they came down and to live on Earth. And now we're destroying the Earth, and so that's the essence of the painting. The raven that's flying away in the background is from the raven mocker. And the raven mocker is one of the scariest of the Cherokee witches. When a death is unattended, the raven mocker comes in and will steal the soul. And that's where the missing heart is in Mother Earth. Being able to Tell our stories, I think, is really important. I like using the documents that are out there that kind of help to tell the stories. I become kind of really intrigued with hands after <laughs> watching my, my own shaky fingers. So I've used hands in, in these paintings, in these past 20 or so paintings of watercolors using uh, different documents as a background. But I've always tried to make statements with my art. And the bolder the statement, the uh, harder it is for me to sell the piece. <laughs> because most people do not like art that makes statements. Most people want to hang the pretty painting in their house, not the one that makes them feel I enjoy seeing my art in public rather than in private collections. I think that that's where our art should be. It needs to be viewed rather than hoarded. Art's been good to me, I can't complain. It's um, taken me places where I might not have gone otherwise. <laughs>